Using my circuit that creates <laughs> <laughs> the gap in between where it goes to the other side of that wire. Like, they could easily go to his body. G'day, legends. Welcome back to another Electrician Reacts, and this is part 10 in the series. And to celebrate, I'm going to be going all the way back to where it began. Uh, well, actually, the second to where it began. That's right. The one, the only, the master of electronics on YouTube, and that is Electro Boom. And in this video, I'm going to be doing the Marx Generator, because you guys think it's pretty cool. So, I have no idea what a Marx generator is. I assume it was named after someone called Mark, because they're always named after somebody. But it should be pretty fun, and you might just learn something. I am learning so much. Also, stick around to the end of the video, because I'm going to be answering one of your comments. So, let's just get straight into it. Hi, today I'm going to attempt to make the largest arc of my life, <laughs> which could be pretty small compared to some arcs other people make. But it will be the largest for me, <laughs> if I can actually make it. And of course, it goes without saying, don't try this at home. All I need is my super high voltage generator circuit that's affecting my lights combined to something called a Marx generator. Marx generator is made of multiple similar stages of high voltage capacitors, resistors, and spark gaps to make an already high voltage DC input into a super high voltage output. And I'm thinking I could probably use my super high voltage capacitor I made a while back. I made my capacitor using two I've actually watched that uh, capacitor that he did. He made a Leyden jar. It was super, super cool. I highly recommend going back and checking it out when you get a chance. I might just leave a card above, uh, but this is going to be pretty cool, I reckon. Two layers of aluminum foil separated by some plastic that should be able to handle tens of kilovolts. And I should be able to charge it using my circuit that creates... <laughs> Clearly, I haven't learned my lesson. <laughs> he is legitimately, that had to have been a zap that he got. It's, that is absolutely hilarious. If you've got any high voltage stuff, uh, please do not play with it, particularly uh, anything that is associated with a microwave, unless you know what you are doing. It is super dangerous. Damn it. Burn my skin See? too. Handling what? high voltage is very dangerous and can easily kill you if you don't have a horseshoe up your butt. <laughs> Maybe that's why I can't sit comfortably. Don't hold high voltage output while holding the ground. All your muscles will contract. It feels <laughs> like you're hit by a truck. <laughs> Be disconnected from everywhere and if you have to, touch the circuit with only one hand. Anyway, let me see if I can use <laughs> my rectified man? voltage to charge my huge capacitor. Should just take him. Oh, <laughs> what the? <laughs> I managed to. I was gonna say he's already compromised the side. You can see he loves doing this stuff. You know it. Kill my self-made capacitor. See, the insulation was damaged here, and the high voltage jumped between the layers and melted the capacitor. See, now the capacitor can't handle the high voltage at all. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is interesting. See, the charges are flying over air due to corona discharge, charging the capacitor enough for it to break down and repeat periodically. Yeah, Look, my capacitor broke, so I ordered a bunch of 15,000 volts, 2 nanofarad ceramic capacitors. Let me see if I can recreate my broken capacitor situation. Here you see, I put a small gap between the legs of my capacitor, and now I can charge it with the high voltage to create the same effect. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> this was the same thing, just much faster. Wow! <laughs> I guess I can increase the gap between the legs so that the capacitor can charge to a higher voltage. Turn off the supply first. I was going to say, you can't actually see it, but the capacitor is being charged. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just that it's so close together. <laughs> <laughs> Capacitors hold charge and can shock you badly. Make sure to discharge them before you touch them. 
Here's a wider gap. This reminds me of when I was doing domestic electrical work. When we went to go and, and install fans or work on fans, they've got uh, uh, capacitors inside the control. <laughs> and often you would take them off and get a zap out of them. And they were pretty painful. Luckily, they only went across your finger. Uh, but it's uh, pretty much the same as what he's doing here, except there's probably a lot more uh, voltage. Jumping anymore? Oh! <laughs> ah, shoo. It seems like the voltage is now above the 15,000 volt rating of the capacitor and just jumps directly between the legs. I might have to put two of them in series then. Anyway, Mark's generator uses the same concept. Quite a simple but smart voltage multiplier. What Mark's generator also has are these spark gaps connected from the end of one capacitor to the input of the next and so on. And these spark gaps are basically switches. When the capacitors charge to a voltage level higher than the breakdown of the spark gap, a low resistance arc jumps across the say first spark gap, shorting these two points, putting these two capacitors in series. I'm interested to know how on earth is he going to get the calculation for the air gap? Uh, how does he know what type of gap that you need? If you ignore the very large resistors. The first arc jumping triggers all the other spark gaps and all the capacitors fall in series. All of a sudden, you have a huge sum of voltage that can arc across a much longer <laughs> distance to ground. When I saw this potential, I said, it's for me? After the discharge, <laughs> all the... I want to know, what type of application does something like this actually have? Is it practical or is this just to show that you can create massive amounts of voltage? I'm not sure. Capacitor voltages drop and the uh, spark gaps open circuit and the cycle continues. Anyway, in addition to my high voltage capacitors, I bought some high power large 1 mega ohm resistors. Not for their power though, banger. just that the resistor legs have to be spaced far enough. Otherwise the high voltage will arc across the resistor, which we don't want. Yeah. Let's put them together. Here's my Marx generator ready to run. This is the output of the circuit and that's the ground. And hopefully there will be huge arcs between them when I turn on my power supply. Nothing? I can't hear the high voltage. Maybe my gaps are too wide? Yeah, this is what I was saying. How does he know? Because it's only going to charge to a certain voltage. So he's going to have to sort of make sure that he tests the, the gap in between. I can raise the power supply to give it more voltage out. <laughs> What's going on? Did you see that? The voltage was so high, the arcs, instead of jumping at the output, they were jumping across the resistors. Maybe I have to make my gaps shorter so the voltage drops, or maybe this gap shorter? Let's see. Oh, you can see! Hey, I have some at the output. Still jumps across the resistors. I think I have to make my gaps shorter. I made my gaps shorter now. Oh, oh, they're all going at once. Unreal. Can I make it wider now? What? There is no way I would be moving that with my hand that close. The gap in between where it goes to the other side of that wire, like they could easily go to his body. That is unreal. Start jumping across the resistor, but that's large. Here's the room a bit darker. Oh, God, this is loud. That's not bad. Sometimes it jumps across the resistor, though. Higher voltage. This jump. Oh, what happened? <gasps> Starting to continuously arc. Yeah, so it's taking the path of least resistance down on one of those uh, spark gaps. That is unreal. They say there is another way to run the circuit. See, right now I'm running my supply voltage at a lower level so the circuit doesn't trigger automatically. And then externally I can trigger the circuit. Say with my screwdriver I can short the first Whoa. gap. 
Oh. <laughs> See? And it jumps. Oh. There you go. Why? Which might be good because it takes a couple of seconds for all the capacitors to fully charge. So this way I can give it time to charge and then trigger the circuit. <laughs> it's not bad. It just makes me a little bit sad that I can't supply a higher voltage to make an even larger arc because my resistors are not big enough and it will just arc across them. But I have another trick. I could cover the entire circuit with polyurethane for better insulation. This stuff I put on my Tesla coil. Well, here we are. Let's no, see if it works. Impressive. Stop jumping. Do I have to trigger it myself maybe? Hey! Oh. <laughs> I got him. Maybe I need to adjust the Ooh, gaps again. I would say the polyurethane had a bad effect on it. I wouldn't add it next time. Oh, yes. It is it's still pretty big. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll remake it later to make the arcs even larger. <laughs> I mean, is there ever an end to this adventure? <laughs> now you might ask, what's the point of this super high voltage generator? What's wrong with you? Can't you see she's sexy? Well, this can be used for lightning tests and some future video ideas. Subscribe not to miss them. All right, that was pretty bloody awesome. And he pretty much answered my question at the end. What the hell do you use these things for? And the answer was like, nothing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up, but not before I read out one of your comments that you've made on another one of my videos. And this one is from Philip H, and that one's from the Electrician Reacts Part 3 on Electroboom. He or she says, my smoke detector at home is battery powered and makes a short screeching beep if the battery is dead. I assume most home smoke detectors are like this in the US. Well, I can't really speak to this because I'm in Australia, but I do know that most smoke detectors in Australia are actually mains powered. So you have to have a mains powered and also the standards say that they must be interconnected if you've got multiple, and most of the time they are. Plus they also have a battery backup as well. So. Thank you very much, Philip, for putting in a comment. If you want me to read out one of your comments, just make a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks very much for watching to the end of the video. If you like this video, you're probably gonna like this one. Also, make sure you like and subscribe.